welcome to IGX 2018. My name is Patrick McCaffrey with the Hemacast, and I'm here with Matt. I'm Matt Gallus uh, from Belgium, sitting in on this IGX broadcast from Boston, Massachusetts. All right, we are about to begin the finals for IGX 2018. So the first event we will have is a dagger competition, starting with the light, going on to the middleweights and the heavyweights. After that, there will be the finals of the uh, mixed weapon tournament, mixed weapon tournament, which is a one-handed uh, weapon with various companion weapons, whatever the choice of the fighter was. Uh, next after that will be the finals of the Wisdom League, that is a senior tournament. Um, Next will be the finals for the women's longsword, then for the beginner's longsword, and then finally ending with the finals for the open longsword for IGX 2018. And right now, Stephen is giving some announcements for the uh, audience right now, some last minute adjustments. Uh, we'll be sure to let you know what those changes are as they come up, but they shouldn't be important for us for the live stream. While he's doing that, maybe we'll have a word about our sponsors. Yes, we have several sponsors for IGX 2018. We have a series of event sponsors. Our event sponsors include Albion, St. Mark, Fallen Rook, Destroyer Mods, Spez, and Sword Squatch. They have donated a variety of um, prizes to the uh, many first, second, and third place competitors. Uh, on top of that, we have several VIP or uh, additional sponsors that have helped us out with uh, generous sponsorships and some last-minute sponsorships. And we want to give special mention to uh, Kevinson, Kevinson Armory for a last-minute sponsorship, as well as St. James, St. James Armory for a very generous sponsorship. Uh, but to give you just a brief rundown of some of the VIPs, or some of the uh, uh, specific sponsors we have. We have PBT. All right, PBT, Hungarian company that makes uh, high quality fencing gear, both for sport fencing, but also for HEMA as well. And next up we have Combat Con. Yeah, Combat Con, uh, event held in Las Vegas, uh, Nevada each year. Sparring Gloves, a uh, Polish company, makes a uh, high quality uh, sparring gloves, especially for longsword in both mitten and five-fingered varieties. We also have HEMA supplies. They are a supplier for HEMA equipment right, in the U.S. Including the uh, Regenie distributor for the United States. Our next sponsor is something everybody in America knows. It's Purple Heart Armory. Purple Heart Armory has been providing uh, HEMA equipment for almost 20 years. Uh, next we have Kvetun Armory. Uh, out of Russia, uh, maker of high quality uh, uh, faders and sabers in particular. I have to say, uh, I was very impressed by the sabers that they had on display today. And then next up we have St. James Armory. Uh, St. James Armory has uh, provided several, uh, I believe several uh, swords for uh, prizes this year. And then our final uh, sponsor is the HEMA Alliance. The HEMA Alliance is a uh, governing board, uh, sort of a governing board for... Yeah, a governing board. It's an association, and a very yes. important association uh, for HEMA, and has done quite a, quite a great deal to develop the HEMA community, and uh, in particular runs that HEMA Alliance face group uh, page that so many people come to HEMA from. And there's also many uh, ancillary things that they do for us. Uh, the HEMA Alliance provides the Club Finder, which if you are looking for HEMA in your particular area, you can go to the HEMA Alliance Club Finder and find other groups near you who want to get involved in HEMA. All right, so uh, I believe they are still working out some details for the finals, but while they're working out those details, uh, let's talk a little bit about the rule set that is uh, unique to IGX this year. All right, so in the rule set this year, both fighters start with five points, and it's actually a subtractive system. So what's gonna be happening is each fighter starts with five points, 
and then as a blow is registered against them, uh, they lose points until they go down to zero. And so, uh, generally, the um, uh, the depending on the type of hit, the loss for per hit is either one point or two points. With the additional point being for things like deep targets or controlling your opponent as you're striking them. The other important thing about all of the competitions is it is specifically four passes. That means that you have four opportunities to take points away from your opponent. At the end of four passes, the person with the higher remaining score is our winner. Uh, for most of the competition today, the pools that led up to this, these finals, uh, there was an additional a bonus for the fighters if the fight was clean. If there were no doubles or after blows in your, in your specific match, both fighters were awarded an additional victory point. Those extra lives that weren't taken away at the end of four passes continues to accumulate for the fighter and gives them their ultimate possession. So the intention of this is uh, to prioritize the defense uh, as the key to, uh, to bringing out clean fencing. And Matt, I'm not sure about you, but I think that overall we saw some very good fencing this weekend. The fencing has looked pretty clean overall from what I saw. It was good. And I, I think it had at least some of the effect. You know, in, in putting together rule sets, it's always difficult. I was just talking, I just did a lecture on historical rule sets, and uh, uh, quite a few of us have had some interesting experiences over the years where we construct rule sets hoping to bring out one kind of behavior, and it often brings out something uh, completely unexpected. But uh, so far, uh, results so far look pretty good here. So while we wait, we can take a look at uh, who's going to be fighting first. So the initial, um, the initial bouts will be for the lightweight dagger. Right. Looks like they're starting. So we are going to shut up and let Julie do the talking. So, in case it was a little difficult to hear, we do have a mic on the field to uh, let you hear what the announcements are. The winners of the cutting tournament in fourth place was TQ. From in the UK? From the UK. In third place was John Moran from uh, the Western Swordsmanship Techniques and Research, Worcester. So, Jake Burns from Boston Armazari got silver. And coming in first, just squeaking past Jake Burns, very close between the two of them, both were very, very good cutters, uh, is Jeff Kim of the New York Historical Fencing Association for gold. Uh, All right, they are getting ready for the third place fight between Harold Vance and Jake Mazza. All right, so with these dagger competitions, you're going to see that these fighters are starting very close to each other and uh, it is a very intense bout that's going to happen very quickly for them. All right, true. Uh, in reality, dagger fights, when they do occur, uh, knife attacks occur from a very close distance, and this appears to be uh, designed to replicate that. The fencers are at very close range. Uh, they start with the dagger at the hip, standing quite close to each other, uh, and then they have to go from that position and start. Ready. So the fight begins. And it's over that quickly. Yeah, it looked like uh, Lou caught his opponent's arm, delivered a blow to the face. I'm not sure if Minus there was two a... Red. Minus yep. two red. Yes. So that was two points in Blue's favor for controlling the arm and stabbing the opponent. Right. It's a control point. It's an addition for controlling the opponent's left arm. So what you'll see in these fights a lot is that attempt to get that left 
hand out there and catch the opponent's weapon arm. There we have it. Looks like a stumble there. Oh, oh. oh, an attempt to throw, but then a reversal, and down he goes. I think that throw is worth two points, correct? Uh, because. Minus two red. Minus yes. two red. Because our blue fighter remained standing, he got a, the additional point. If he had gone down with the red fighter, it would have been worth only one point. Right. Oh. Oh. Ooh. Another very quick match there. Minus right. one blue, minus one red. So what you minus see in these fights blue, is they're very fast paced. We've seen this throughout. Is you're at such a close distance, it either ends up being a quick rush forward or one of them jumps back. You get a little additional time to deal with the one. Another quick thing to note. None of these matches have a time limit, so they are given as much or as little time as they would like to take in this fight. Although the fact of the matter is these dagger bouts are very, very fast paced. Yes. All right. So, Matt, I'm going to step away for a moment. I just want to announce that we have Tyler Sargent and Zach Kuchansky. Tyler Sargent of Grunberg Firefecker. Zach Kuchansky in red from Pioneer Valley. Right. Yep. And so. the reason Patrick McCaffrey is stepping away is because he is actually one of the competitors in the uh, dagger middleweight middle competition. I will be fighting for third place in just a moment. I want to gear up so I'm not slowing anybody else down. So I'll leave you with Matt, and I'll be back shortly. <laughs> Table ready? Table ready. Judges? Eight. Ready. Judges ready. Fight. So, swing and miss. Fight to grab. It looked like a catch of the hand and a blow to the head. We'll see what the judges say. Minus two red. Minus two red. Yes, so that was a control point for control of the left arm, blow to the head uh, by Baloo, taking two points away. Nice dodge. What? Red. Minus one blue, minus one red. Yeah, that's what minus it looked like. One it was a double blue, hit. Minus one Only red. A moment, please. Initial quick blow by Red, I think that was judged as ineffective. There's, with these quality points, they have the ability, the judges have the ability to disregard hits if they believe they're too light. So it was an initial blow by Red, followed by an assault uh, by Blue, which... Minus one blue, minus one red. Minus one blue, minus one red. So I think the initial hit landed, and then there was the uh, the follow-up hit by Blue. Is this last exchange? Last exchange. Subtracted from both. One one. Last exchange. Taking a little more time here. Swing and a miss. Point. Oh. Judges. Minus one blue. Minus one red. Minus one blue. Minus one red. That's match. One point. <laughs> tournament is middleweight dagger. The first tournament will be between Patrick McCaffrey in blue versus Derek Weiss in red. So my co-announcer is not with me because he's actually fighting here. That's Patrick McCaffrey from Pennsylvania, who is blue, I believe. Yes fighting against Derek Wise, who is red.
So this is the bronze medal match. Middleweight dagger. Ready. Judges? Ready. Fight. Let's go, Patrick. A little bit of feeling out. Point. Looked like an initial stab by red. Looked like it was blocked and a blow to minus the head by Minus one blue, minus one red. Minus one blue, minus one red. Uh, both both blows hit though. One Ready. point for, from each opponent. Fight. Point. Looked like a quick grab for the left arm by Patrick McCaffrey and several blows to minus the head. Minus one blue, minus one red. Minus one blue, minus one red. That initial blow also looked like a hit from Ready. Derek Wise as well. Fight. Point. I believe that was a double as well. Minus one red. Minus one red. That was a hit on red by blue. Final exchange. One. Final exchange. Ready. Fight. Taking a little more time. Nice exchange. Oh. Oh. Minus one red. Minus one red. That's right. match. An attempt to catch the arm. Mm -hmm. The bump is just dangerous. The victor for bronze. And he now rejoins us, which gives us the opportunity to have an impromptu interview with one of our competitors. <laughs> Uh, what did you think? That was in blue from very intense, very quick. Um, Kevin Willey in red from LIHFF. Don't want to talk over the announcements, but uh, one of the things that's very difficult to uh, really describe, um, in a lot of the dagger manuals, there is a lot of asymmetric dagger. There, that means one person has a dagger, the other person does not. Um, in this competition, we are seeing a symmetric dagger fight where both uh, members have the dagger. Uh, there are, <laughs> again, pardon me for being out of breath. Uh, okay. Just a quick, a quick announcement here. <clears throat> Eddie Lewis is uh, um, ready. from Blue is uh, the first competitor and Kevin Willis is red. Both jump back, keeping their distance, sensing each other. Extension of an arm by red. Reaching for that blade. Point! Oh. A blow to the hand. And in this blue. rule set, blue, blows to the hand do not score. They are a non scoring action. We are only counting deep targets for these stabs. Yeah, we'll see if anything occurred from that. It looked like they both took a. Uh, it, it looks like they, they both took a blow to the hand, but I'm not sure if, that, if anything counted yeah. there. We're redoing that exchange. They're redoing, redoing the, exchange. the exchange. I guess that was as unclear to them as it was to us. Ready. 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 Fight. These two much cagier, keeping their distance than most of the other competitors. So oh, oh. that looked like a thrust to the face Ready. by red against blue. Minus one blue, minus one red. And minus it looks like blue. the after blow from minus one red, red back to blue was yeah. in tempo. So something to know. In a... Uh, in some of these fights, you're seeing your competitor keep what we colloquially call ice pick grip, which is that overhand grip. And then uh, you are allowed to change to a, again, colloquially saber grip for that overhand. Right, so quite a bit of uh, circling there and overhand thrust. Minus one blue, underhand minus grip. one red. And again, as you're seeing. Ready. Fight. Point. Ooh, very quick exchange there. Uh, and you're minus one blue. Minus one blue. You see that Last happen pass. often, uh, where you can either back away and focus on defense, or you can jump in and press the attack. Yeah, definitely with this close distance, there is scope for a, for a very quick 
uh, blow from the get from the starting gate uh, with a with a bit of a lunge and hitting the opponent by surprise. We've seen that quite a bit actually. So a lot of the folks you'll see that'll happen once and then the next. Uh, uh, the next round, they jump back very quickly to make sure that doesn't happen again. Yeah. Uh, historically, dagger fights were very dangerous. Um, and they still are. Yeah. Uh, we are, do want to specify that these are daggers. Minus one blue. Minus one blue. That was the last Would... pass. Well, it looks like a red fighter has won that. Let me see what they say in a moment. Right. So. All right, and just to uh, let our listeners at home know, we do have a list of some of the prizes that these competitors are fighting for. Now, these fighters don't know what the prizes are. Um, all of the prizes are donated by our sponsors, and they don't find out what they're getting until... Uh, the finals dinner later on tonight. But for our light dagger fighters. We are now ready to begin. Heavyweight dagger finals. <laughs> the first round will be between Kyle Marot of WSTR in blue versus Christian Kumer in, from Boston Armazara in red. All right, that's Kyle Merritt from Worcester and Christian Kunert. Or Boston Armazara. Boston Armazara. All right, so I'm going to tell you what our heavy dagger competitors are fighting for. For third place, they're looking at a $25 gift certificate to St. James and a Spez towel. Our second place um, winner will get a head cover from Spez. And our first place will get a hundred euro for PBT and a copy of Encased in Steel. And again, our fighters don't know what they're fighting for until they find out later tonight. Yeah, you see that initial move back, create a little distance, create a little more time. A little interesting underhand grip, kind of thing you see in Meyer and Telhofer from the oh, oh. blue. All right. Minus one blue, minus one red. Minus one blue, minus one red. So blue had a good idea to get that hand out there and uh, try to cover against red's attack, but he wasn't controlling that arm. Oh. It's important, and we do see in the manuals to hold on to that. So we saw there was an interesting elbow push by Blue, uh, and then a blow at the same time. That was actually really well done. Ooh, and that was a reverse yeah, cut. Reverse, uh, yeah, reverse thrust, uh, reverse overhand thrust by uh, by Red. Looks like it landed. No points awarded there. We're gonna redo that. All right. Are we doing that for some reason? It looks like the uh, judges didn't feel there was enough contact to award that. Yeah, point. there is that quality issue throughout these rules where the judges can, can decide to throw something out. They just don't feel there's sufficient uh, force behind the blow. What? Yep. Looked like an immobilization by uh, minus one blue. blue, minus one red. Uh, minus one looks blue, like you got minus one They both red. got through, this is yeah. The last pass. Ready. Fight. Oh. Minus one red. Minus that was very well red. done. That was a nice was quick exchange. Pass. Blue got his hand up in the way of Red's blade. And he was able to blow it up. And Kyle Merritt, Kyle Merritt from uh, Worcester has won it. Has won third place for the heavyweight. Now, so now we have Craig Kellner and Andrew Kilgore fighting for gold. Up next, in the heavyweight dagger final, Craig Kellner of Capital KDF in blue versus Andrew Kilgore of Woo! Athena School of Arms in red. Andrew Kilgore easily qualifying as the noisiest person at this tournament and at this event. Very easily. Um, Andrew has always been a very um, He's a big personality. passionate individual. Uh, so, Tim, we're ready. Ready. Judges ready. Ready. Fighters ready. Ready. Fight. All right. 
We'll jump a well back. Creating some space. Oi! Oh! That looked like a very quick, powerful thrust. Overhand by From. Blue. No points, no points awarded. Redo the exchange. Redo the pass. Looks like they didn't give the point because they felt that the dagger landed on the arm yeah, and not the torso. Not the deep target. That's what it looked like to me. It looked like it landed on the upper arm. Yeah. And it was a good strike, but it just yeah, wasn't it's not deep enough. Wasn't on the target. Point! Ooh. That looked like a swing and a miss uh, by blue and then a blow that hit by red over the top. If it was if you're seeing the last one, I feel like I went over the top. One point blue. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Minus one point red. Minus one point red. All right, it looks like they were both attempted to award points, but red declined his point, feeling that was not quality. And that's something... Point. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. All right, so... There was a... Solid contact there. Yeah, solid blow. I didn't see what happened exactly. If that was a, if it was a punch. It was a. It looked like a glancing blow. It didn't. Not all the force was behind the dagger, and it wound up being a strike with the hand to the side of the head. Um, and there was a warning against uh, that fighter. Great kill. It is very easy to get uh, have that adrenaline dump and. Uh, sure, really go for sure, it. Sure, and especially in Dagger where you're in such close quarters and it's, no it's so fast paced. We're redoing pass two. So, pass two being redone. Ready. Fight. And they're keeping distance and they're. Roll, uh, Andrew taking an interesting uh, sort of half dagger grip. Shilt. Yeah, and we see that in Fiore yeah, in. Top up there as well. Yeah. Point. But it was a underhand grip by uh, Kellner and an overhand, but with an overhand Minus thrust. Minus one red. Minus one red. Which did land red. to the deep target, so that was one blow against red. Table ready. It is very difficult to to block some of these uh, over or underhand grips and overhand thrusts. Yeah, it's an interesting... Oh! oh. 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 Now, I think they called that a little soon. Yeah, I don't think there was an actual contact. Minus one yeah, red. red was moving in to try and, Last do, uh, try and do a throw, and uh, it looked like he got hit with the dagger on the way in. And it's very Ooh. difficult to, to know those things. But that's why we have judges on both sides, so they can see what we can. Right. Oh. Kellner has very good, fast, Minus but one very solid Minus hit. one red. That's my <laughs> Sort of a thing from above and then a uh, thrust from below. In an ice pick grip, interesting. You see that in there. Yeah. Got him with it. So, for anybody at home who was wondering, are there weight classes for all the competitions? Well, only in the dagger competition. And that's really because uh, dagger fighting and grappling are so intrinsically. Yeah, they're intertwined. That you can't. The dagger is a. Uh, it's a very close range it, weapon and you're inherently in grappling distance when you're using it. Yeah. And, you know, especially when you've got two daggers out there, of course, that this arm is, is going to get out there mixed weapons. to try and uh, tangle blue, up the other guy's dagger arm. So that Burns naturally of leads you into that situation. And in red, we have Abelard Newell of Forte Swordplay. So, so we are... Uh, these are the finals of the mixed weapon competition. And so, again, to recap, these are basically any one-handed weapon you wanted to take, whether it be rapier or saber or side sword, uh, uh, messer or dusak, and you can accompany it with any companion weapon or not, as you see fit. So, interesting mix of one-handed weapons, two-handed weapons, of course, out. Uh, we have seen uh, in the mixed weapon competition, the offhand weapon could be a buckler, a, um, a dagger, a, a cape. A cape, you in know, fact. Anything you want. And so, interesting in this, so you've got uh, Jake Burns uh, versus Jacob Burke. Jake Burns just took the uh, silver. So it is actually Jake Burns versus Ablard Newell. Ah, that's right. We, we had a last minute substitution. Correct. correct. 
Jake Burns, uh, it was just announced a few minutes ago, he took uh, silver uh, in the cutting competition. So that was with, uh, with Longsword. Uh, he did a fine job, I watched that. Uh, beautiful job cutting. Uh, so he's shown his skill with a, with a longsword. Now he's going to show his skill with a one-handed weapon. And we're going to see that the uh, weapons you use are really anything you want. And we see Jake Burns is using uh, a large buckler and a rapier. Table ready. Versus uh, Abelard's. I'm looking rapier and. Yeah, rapier. It looks like a rapier dagger versus uh, rapier and buckler. Rapier and buckler is actually uncommon, but it, it actually is quite a good combination. Oh! <laughs> I'm not sure if that's actually a rapier or if that might be a side sword. It, uh, it's actually, a, I, I think I've. It looks to me like a short, it looks like a short rapier. It, it's uh, by blue, side sword length, red. but it's quite a light blade. One point red. Got it. Ready? Ready to find that point? Yeah. Okay. So red has declined the no, point. So you can't because it, it's against him. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. Sorry, I got confused there for a second. Yeah, no, you got <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize for misunderstanding there for a moment. So that was a point <laughs> against red. Right. Red thought it was a point right. for him and attempted to decline it. So, yeah, it looked like there was a Fine. tangle up there and a parry with the buckler and a thrust by uh, Jake Burns. So that, that buckler, that, that buckler is pretty big. Um, you don't see those a lot, but that's actually a very legit oh. weapon combination. Yeah, as we are seeing. Like by blue, one point against red. One point against red. So for the dagger competition, the only way you could get two points was with a throw or with controlling the weapon. For these uh, mixed weapon and the longsword, the only way you get two points is for a thrust to the torso or a cut or thrust oh. to the head. All other targets are worth one point, and the entire body is a target with the exception of the groin and back of the head and spine. So what you're seeing here is, you know, in, in, in Spanish martial arts, this is what you'd call a broquel grande. It's a, it's a large buckler. And it's actually doing quite a good job of picking up the thrust so from that rapier. Right. One point against blue. One point against blue. Last pass. Ready, fight. All right, circling each other on this last pass. It may not show up on uh, film, but it looks like that's actually a flame-bladed rapier. Yeah, a little awesome. flame burnish. Hold. What? Okay. <laughs> All right, it looked like a member of the audience was calling a safety hall that was unneeded. Uh, for all of our competitions, any time there is a safety issue, either gear flying or anything like that, anybody can call a hold. So Burns binding down the other guy's uh, rapier, taking a, a controlling it nice below to the head. Proposed by Red to the torso. Right, but there was an um, after so that's, uh, Two points against Red, one point against Blue. Uh -oh. right. Two points against Red, one point against Blue. Yeah. That was the last pass. Yeah. Will you refresh that? Can you refresh that? I'm sorry. You can't ask me to refresh it. You can say I declined the hit against me. I'm sorry, I, I declined the hit that I landed, but you can't. If you want to refresh that. Um, well, well, I didn't feel the head hit. They, they may have saw something I didn't see. Some discussion amongst the fighters. You think you didn't So, uh, a bit of sportsmanship for. Right. Jake Burns has declined the head hit, uh, which I saw. Uh, I saw too. <laughs> but he apparently didn't. Uh, uh, he didn't like that for some reason. Hey. Uh, he. So, uh, something about sportsmanship, all of our fighters are allowed to decline points that they have scored. And the match is to blue to Jake Burns. Jake Burns took third place, and from the mixed weapons, he will be awarded a padded skirt from Spez. The next match in mixed weapons finals is Nathan Weston from the Athena School of Arms in blue, versus Laurent Taylor Santer from Academy Sumichi in red. All right, so Nathan Weston is local and he is fighting with a rapier and cape. Laurent Thiel Santer 
is from Canada. He is. I actually got a chance to meet him over the summer when I came up and visited him. Um, I've known both of these fighters now, and this should be a great fight. It should be interesting. Yeah, I watched him, him fight in Longsword as well. He's a very skilled fencer. All right. It looks like Laurent is using a uh, broadsword like and broad targe. Broadsword and targe against, uh, looks like rapier and dagger. Or rapier, rapier and cloak. And cloak. This but is he's a lefty. Oh, that's going to be a very interesting fight. So this is, uh, this I is am excited. So Nathan Weston, left-hander. Uh, it looks like another... Uh, yeah, you tell me. It looks like a very short rapier is what it looks like to me. Uh, for Nathan? Yes, definitely a, a rapier. Yeah, pretty short rapier along with a, uh, along with a cloak. With the Canadian using targe. So this is actually a very... Each fighter is using a classic combination of weapons that has appeared, both historically and in manuals. If they ever got a chance to fight each other in history... Feeling out the bind. A little bit of preliminary play from long distance. Beating each other's blades. The left-hander on the outside line, okay. this one does. So, looked like plus almost a hand hit, but not quite. Probably got the guard. Overhead oh. press, looked like a beautiful uh, reverse cut by uh, light, though, by the Canadian. Uh, striking yes. blue on the head, I believe. Yep. So, if you have this one attack by red to the head, uh, repost by blue to the body. So, that's uh, double, uh, two points against blue, one point against red. Again, Two points those, against blue, I one point against red. So I did see uh, Nathan Ready. shot Five. underneath yeah. on the body. Um, so that was one point against each. What's interesting it was actually is two points against Nathan because of the shot to the head. Again, those deep targets are worth right. more points. Two versus one. So okay. the, the deep target. So what's interesting here is uh, when the lefty fights the oh, right hander, oh. There's always this fight for the outside line. You always want to stay on the outside. But uh, the Canadian's actually quite good coming around okay, over the top right. with those so, reverse uh, cuts. So, this one attack the head by red, repose to the arm by blue, double, two points against blue, one point against red. So it's the two same sort of thing. Then. Blue, one point two points for the head red. hit, one point Ready? for the uh, arm. Fight. That's right. Blue. Swing with the cape. Much more active with the cape now. And that cape, if it catches the tip of uh, oh, oh. Lawrence. Solid cut. Ooh. Looked like there's a torso, which would be one point. So by, it's a question. Uh, yeah, by wrong. It'll be a question of whether or not Nathan's shot to the head was in tempo. Uh, for all these uh, competitions, there is that what we call a tempo, a time after the initial blow is struck for any after blow to occur. Um, we always try to disincentivize striking in such a way that allows for an after blow because... Right, so clean defense, right? Any, any attack should have an element of defense in it. So it shouldn't be suicidal. You should be looking out for your own defense uh, uh, into the aftermath. Cut to the head by red, making your attack. the torso by... Sorry. Cut to the head against red, cut to the, uh, repose to the torso against blue, so that's one point blue against blue, two points against red. One okay. point against blue, two points against red. That's match. And that is match. That was three Woo! exchanges. Yeah! But that was enough points so, uh, to take place. Nathan out. First place, all right? And we have Lawrence. Phil Santer getting first place. From Canada, first place. Nathan is going to be taking home a pair of coning gloves from St. Mark's. And Laurent is going to be bringing home an arming sword from St. James, a pass to combat con, and a hundred euro for PBT. So now we're going to be going into what they're going to begin. calling the Wisdom Tournament for the, yeah. for the We're now going to begin the, the finals fencers. for the Wisdom League. We have, in blue, John Kinsbacher of Worcester All right, Berkeley. well, they are getting ready for uh, in red, this next set of, uh, of Worcester Historical Swordsmanship. This next set of fights. 
We're going to tell you a little bit about our sponsors again. Once again, we have Kvitan Armory. Um, Matt, I think you can tell a little bit yeah, more sure. about Kvitan. Uh, Kvitan is a, a fairly new company out of Russia, um, but they're making very solid faders and uh, some very, very exciting sabers. In fact, uh, they're on my acquisition list, is what I've been telling people, because uh, out of the sabers that are out there, I've, out of the ones that I've held, uh, the Kvetun sabers are really lovely. Yep, and we are also going to bring a spotlight onto Purple Heart Armory. Purple Heart, Purple Heart Armory has been sponsoring HEMA events across the United States for years now, and they have been supplying some great equipment, and they've been doing it for about 20 years. Right, and they've got an interesting new line of, of weapons coming out. Uh, they're working with a particular smith uh, in Hungary, and uh, it's actually uh, some pretty impressive weapons that are coming out, but more on that later. Pretty All right, we are in the Wisdom Longsword third place match, and this is between Don Kinsvater and Christopher Pelagi. Or Pelagi. So, oh, oh. so both of them uh, blades extended and sort of a, a long and art retracted long and art blow by one red point to against the leg blue. against blue. Thanks. So for our Wisdom League fighters uh, to qualify for the Wisdom League, it is I believe uh, our fighters who are 50 okay, years old. old. That was a, uh, looked like a clean hit by blue to the left arm of red. One point against red. So that's one point. And I think that this really came about as a way for some people who have been fighting for years. It was a thrust and a parry by red. A blow that looked like it hit the guard and then a follow-on blow that looked like it hit by blue. Uh, that looked like a great thrust from blue to red. Uh, we'll see what the judges saw. Oh, yeah. No exchange. Nothing. We're doing the pass. Yes, correct. Really? Yes. No exchange prior to the ring out. Fine. <laughs> so, so that was a no exchange because the fighters continued the action outside of the ring, and ring outs are non-scoring actions. They stop the action for safety reasons. Oh, oh. Good exchange there. It looked like red uh, cut down towards the hands as uh, blue threw his workout towards the head. It is a very difficult job for our judges to not only see all what happened, but also, there. Double hit, both struck to the arms. It's one point against both fencers. Right. One so point it was a double hit. Both fencers. Both fencers hit each other on the arms. Final exchange. Final pass. And here's our final, <clears throat> final exchange here in this bronze medal match. Oh, oh. All right, there's a valid strike to the hand from blue. That's one point from red. That is match. All right. So one point from blue. Blow to the hand. Blow to the hand by blue. Okay. 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 All right. All right. <laughs> they are going to announce our third place winner. So bronze medal winner. Some of these masks are a little hard to get off, and that's a good thing. So that is Don Kinsfather of Boston. And these are great competitors. They fought through a pool to get to where they're at right now. The next match in the Wisdom League Finals is between <coughs> Victor Lavenstein in blue from RIFAC versus Ryan Russell in red from Five State Historical Fencing. So, Victor Lavenstein in blue, Ryan Rusek in red for gold in this Wisdom League. So our Wisdom League longsword fighters, third place got a PBT Gorget. Our second place fighter will get a PBT head cover and 10% off his next order for Spez. 
And first place, we'll get $100 for destroyer mods and a PBT cover. <coughs> So again, I think the idea behind the Wisdom League isn't because they're not good fighters, but because when you have age versus uh, youth. Right, so blue and a tail guard, right? Uh, red, Oh, tog. He, he made a cut. Looks like it raked across the chest. I think that would probably be thrown out for lack of quality. One point from blue. One point okay. from blue. They had the option to kick that out as a lack of, for lack of quality, but they chose to apply it. So that is one point against blue. It's kind of a rake. Okay. Oh! That was, uh, well, red was in left foam tog. Strike to the arm. On the one shoulder, there was a strike red. to the arm one by point blue. From hit, red. Uh, that hit red on Fence. the arm, on the forearm, on the right forearm. One point. Oh. And exactly the same thing happened again. So Red was in Fumtag on the left shoulder. You see it's an initial thrust that didn't quite land. As he was coming forward from that guard, he got hit on the right arm. from blue, strike to the arm, one point from Red. So it was another strike by blue to the right arm of Red. Last pass. And it looked like, it looked like blue hit Red on the arm twice. The first one, our judge didn't call because I believe he saw it as flat. Yeah. Or without quality. At least that's what it looked like from oh, my oh, point okay. of view. And that blow looked like a flat blow in exactly the same place by. Uh, uh, by blue. Okay, so had the strike to the arm from blue, followed in time, strike also to the arm. One point against both fencers. One point against both fencers. Yeah. That is yeah. Matt. Looks like they, they saw called. that as a, blow, as a double hit from both, each to the arm. Frankly, it looked to me like there was uh, a blues hit. It's flat, but, you know. But then again. Minds can differ on these things. Yeah. And Sometimes our judges. It's a question of angle, right? Yeah, our judges are seeing something that we can't. Yeah. All right. It looks like our winner is uh, Victor Lavenstein. All right, our next match will be our women's finals. And again, I'm going to take just a quick moment to give a shout out to some of our sponsors. Uh, we're going to mention we sparring gloves right the, now. Sparring glove, we have the final as any fighter will tell you, sword. the gloves that you use are important. And sparring glove makes a good product for our fighters to keep their hands safe so we can go back to our day jobs. Stephanie Cantin from Academy Sunisi, she's in blue, versus Eva Arneson from Athena School of Arms in red. Woo! All right. All right. So Stephanie Cantin uh, in blue and Eva Arneson in red from Athena uh, Academy in, uh, in Boston. And Stephanie is also visiting us from Canada and uh, actually came down with Thiel, so there's a lot of Canton. Table ready. Yeah. She's, Table from, ready. Uh, she's from Canada. Yeah. There's a lot of good talent coming down and visiting us today. Great. Yeah, there are four countries represented here today. All right. So, from Tog in the shoulder. A bit of a long enough. Yeah. Bit of a messy exchange there. From where we're at, and we are at one side of the ring, so we can't always see all the action. Um, I don't know about you, Matt, but I couldn't actually see yeah, I had any a, of the contacts. The first fighter had her back to me, so it was very difficult to see what was going on from this angle. One point deducted from each fencer. Yeah, so that was, uh, yeah, it was a bit of a messy exchange. It looked like a, it looked like a series of double hits, to be frank. <laughs> All right, I like it. <laughs> that if you're watching the live stream, you're getting a little bit better view than we are. Yeah, we have, uh, we're watching the back of one of the fighters, unfortunately. Oh! It looked like a sphere that, that missed to me, but... Uh, so you can see, uh, we can see through the masks, the smile on these fighters' faces. They are just really enjoying themselves. And that's, that's really important for 
all of our fighters out there enjoying themselves and practicing their art. So Stephanie Cantan from Canada, typically using a, a Langenort, coming out in Langenort, uh, the other typically in Fontag. Uh, she's a lefty. Fencer from Boston. Oh. Looked like that was a blow to the right arm by Stephanie and Blue. And you can see our fighters congratulating each other on that clean exchange. Wow. One point deducted from red. This is the last pass. That's right. great. Last opportunity again. Long and North versus Swamp Pong. With another oh. arm below. Oh by Stephanie, cutting from the right, striking on the left arm of Eva Arneson from Boston. Most competition. That's what I saw, at least. So, we got some stuff. <laughs> then blue starts spinning, <laughs> and then the after blow. Yeah, you know, don't know if it's going to start off. Wouldn't matter. It wasn't blocked. Thank you. All right, so that is one point deducted from red. What? One point deducted from red. That is match. Right. So that that looks like there is that arm below. Awesome. Um, that's definitely from blue. Look down the back. Strike on the arm. All right, so this was the third place match. Bronze, women's longsword. Bronze goes to Canada. <laughs> and Stephanie will be taking home Spez forearm and elbow guards. So our, our gold medal match is between Charlotte Morgan sword. and Christina Twombly. We have Charlotte Morgan in blue. All She's right. from Grunberg's trifecta versus Christina take Tomley a moment to red from Boston again Harbor give Island. a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, the HEMA Alliance. The HEMA Alliance uh, is providing some event support for uh, IGX this year. Uh, they are providing event support for events across the country, and you can find more information at the HEMA Alliance.com. Table ready. Table ready. Blue fencer ready. It looked like a good cut to the hand from it red. It looked pretty light. One point against, one point against blue. Okay. Great. Judges saw it. Otherwise, one point against blue. So he's feeling each other out. This is a very calm match. Pretty clean fighting. So I believe our fighters, um, Charlotte Morgan is with Grunberg Freifactor. They are a Meyer club. And uh, Christina Twombly is from Boston Armatsari. One right. point against each. Looks so like one point on each. With an in-tempo blow. Uh, Christine, Christine Twombly is with Boston Armatsari, a Fiore club. So you'll see them use slightly different guards in different ways. Bind, fight in the bind, looked like a thrust underneath <laughs> by Twombly. I'm not sure if the judges saw that. Right. Yeah, they basically went up in the bind. There was a little bit of a scrapple there. It looked to me like Twombly got her arm and thrust her underneath. Yeah, it looks, it looks like, like the judges saw that. There was a thrust which eventually arrived. Yeah. Four red. Two points against blue. Two points right, against so that, blue. That thrust underneath from Twombly that did arrive to the belly. Uh, thrust to the torso is to black pass. Yeah. So this is our last pass. Low guards by Twombly. Looked like a bind. Looked like a half serve. Oh. That was a beautiful exchange. The crowd always loves it when somebody goes to half-star. Against blue by red. Two points against 
Two points against blue. Two points against blue. That's a half. A half star for us by Red. Old Tom did actually arrive. That was pretty nice. Nice to see a half star for us in a gold medal match. Definitely. So our second place is going to receive Red Dragon gloves and 10% off spez. Gold. Winner's long sword. All goes to Christine Fondler. Christine Fondler. And she will be getting free Sword Squatch entry next year and a copy of Encased in Steel. Well, they are getting ready for the next competition, which is Beginner's Longsword. Again, I would like to give a shout out to some of our sponsors. Up next, we have the finals for Beginner's Longsword. Now we're going to <laughs> give a quick shout out to St. James Armory. St. James Armory has in blue, provided. Uh, we have Wise, several weapons for this Armadara. and has been very generous. And in red, we have Jeffrey Barabarian from LIHFS. So we have Derek Wise, who we did see fight earlier, I believe. He fought for the uh, third place in the middleweight dagger. He is fighting again in the beginner's longsword. He is from Austin Armitsari. And then we have Jeffrey Bavarian who is fighting from the Long Island Historical Fencing Society. So these beginner longsword fighters fought yesterday in teams. We had four teams of beginner longsword fighters who would pair up one team against another and all the five fighters from one team would fight all five of the other fighters from the other team. And they were being coached by some really good uh, mentors. Looks like they're getting ready to fight. I'll tell you a little bit more about those mentors after this match. Low guard by blue, sort of a flu by red. The point comes up, a bit of a beat, just to feel the other guy out. Faint by red, blue breaks distance. Oh, oh. beautiful, beautiful. Cut and a miss by red. Followed, followed by uh, a thrust to the throat. To the throat from blue, yeah, by blue. From red. Beautiful. That Two was classic knock rise. Red. Very nice, very nice. Cut. It's classic two-time defense. Red. Oh, evade the, evade the one cut one moment, and move please. back in with the thrust. Very nice. So, that, that was a beautiful knock rise. And though I don't think the blue fighter would actually call it that because he is a... Uh, he studies Fiore with Boston Arm, it's all right, but it, do <laughs> but it doesn't matter. It's all the same thing. We just have different names for sure. it. So just talking about the styles, we'll see a lot of the KDF style fencers will take higher guards and a lot of our... This is, sorry, this is just interesting. There's a lot of sensing here. Oh, feeling each other out. A lot of little... Little feints, a couple of attempts to get the leg and foiled. Oh, nice. Nice thrust that got parried. A lot of good blade. Oh, oh, beautiful clean hit to the to the right arm. After quite a deal of, of feeling nice it out. Blade work. One that was yeah. like quite a nice red. exchange. And I think these fighters are really showing that. Oh. <laughs> this, is, this is good. This is, uh, this is quite a nice belt so far. Um, yeah, they are showing that they are worrying about defense, and not taking silly chances to just get a point. This is great. These are beginners. This is fantastic. This makes me happy. I, I see beginners fencing like this, and it makes me think good things for the future of HEMA. Agreed. A lot of sensing each other out. A lot of little things. Oh, 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 beautiful thrust by blue. Unsetting. Lifting up into left off, beautiful, beautiful thrust. And again, these fighters are. Thrust from blue, two points from red. Two points from red. That's match. That's match. These fighters are giving wonderful props to each other. And that was Derek Wise who has won. Derek Wise in blue. From Boston Armour, it's good, good fighting from both. Yes. Okay, Derek Wise, I've already made it Derek Wise. Really, really nice. What did you do to that table?
Up next, for the finals for Beginner's Longsword, we have Robert Smith of Nickel City Longsword in blue versus Yishen Liu of Boston Armazara in red. All right, so we have two more Beginner Longsword fighters. Um, just a quick note about all these beginner fighters. This could be their first actual tournament that they are competing in. And again, yesterday, they were put in teams with a coach to help them be as good of fighters as they can. And these coaches were not from their club, and it gave them a different perspective on things, and hopefully a good one. All right, so this is our gold medal match. Confident fighters moving in, nice control of space. Oh. It looked like a thrust that got parried by blue and a cut by red, although it was a little difficult to see because I had we were looking blue at with his the, back to us. Yeah, it looked like blue tried to do a one-handed yeah, thrust. Yeah, parried. That's yeah. what it looked like to me, and it looked like there was then a repost by red, but we'll see. I think it was to the arm against blue, but so, we'll see. Initial scoring action, so thrust to the body from blue, two points against blue. Oh, red. it landed. After blow in time, strike to the arm, one point from blue. Okay, so the thrust that we thought was parried actually landed, so that's two, two points, points against red, against one point red, against blue. And followed by the after blow to the arm by red, so it's two versus one. Nice positioning by both fighters, good stance. Okay, so it looked to me. Oh, oh. I thought I saw a hit in there, but uh, I, th I thought I saw a cut earlier, but nobody called it, and then it was followed by a, a nice onset zone by, yeah. uh, by blue. Yeah. blue to red is valid. I'm calling the after blow insufficient. So I think a lot of that first exchange, there was a lot of things caught on the cross red. guard. So yeah. the blades didn't Fresh. reach the body, or if it did, it didn't reach it yeah. with sufficient force. But that thrust was beautiful. Right, that was really nice. Again, feeling oh, and oh, a little bit of action. It looked to me like a beat out of the way, a little bit of a probing, then a beat, and a, and a cut to the uh, to the left arm of red, I believe, by blue. I agree. I think that's what I saw, but we'll see what the judges saw. All right. There was a valid strike to the hand. C delivered from blue. One point from red. One point from so red. That is indeed match. what happened. That's Matt. Right, and I believe that is Robert Smith taking first place, Li Shen Liu taking second. So our beginner fighters, third place took, is taking home a padded skirt from Spez, second place. Again, Robert Smith taking first place. I have, to, I have to say, just for a second, I just, I just want to really commend all these fighters. That was really, really good fighting from this beginner's tournament. I'm that was very pleased. beautiful fighting. I absolutely loved it. Our second place uh, is taking a HEMA Supplies Scholar Jacket and a copy of Encased in Steel. And our first place is taking an arming sword from St. James Armory. Entry to IGX next year. In blue. And 100 euros for PBT. Powell of Philadelphia Common Fencers Guild. In red, we have Arthur Fama of Bard and Steam. So it's Connor Kemp of uh, Philly. And Ardo Fama from Utrecht in the Netherlands. Uh, Ardo is a uh, well-known fencer in Europe. Uh, uh, he's been a, a big factor on the scene since about 2010, but recently has really taken off. Uh, frankly, I think he's. I think he's one of. I think he's probably one of the best, if not the best, technical fencer uh, in HEMA right now. And uh, he's. He won the technical award at the Dutch Lions Cups for, for the uh, last two years, and I was a judge for, for both of those cases, and he stood head and shoulders really above anybody else, and in fact, in, in one bout, he disarmed his opponent three times. It's pretty amazing to see. While we're waiting for Arda to come here, again, we want to give a shout out to all of our uh, sponsors, especially PBT Historical Fencing. Uh, you've heard us saying PBT a few times to, uh, about prizes that they've been giving, and they are, again, a HEMA supplier that has really been supportive of the entire community. All right, for quite some time. And we just want to give a quick shout-out to all of our event sponsors. Um, 
This entire tournament could not be done without the help of all of the event sponsors. All right, so Arto Fama of the Netherlands in red and Connor Kemp Cowell of Philly uh, in blue. So we keep seeing uh, a very interesting combination where we have Let's go, Connor! a... Uh, right, so Connor's a lefty. Keep your eye on that. And Arto doing his typical guard transition. Okay, up in frontal. Whoa, sparks from the blade. Oh. Beautiful. But it looked like a cut to the arm by Arto. Uh, it looked like Connor got a good cut to the Did arm. Did you see that spark? I saw that, that spark. Was that was beautiful. beautiful. So... I, I know I've been mentioning the uh, different styles of fighting, and really, that's just your approach, because they all... Right. Right, that's what I saw, too. One point against red. Uh, nice One exchange of blows, red. beautiful spark, and followed Great. by a cut to the arm Let's, by blue. Let's go, Arno! Arno's after blow go, is an insufficient strength. Yeah. Oh! So Arno comes in with his train, trademark <laughs> double or triple spark. <laughs> and again, some good sportsmanship between our fighters. Uh, even though there was a third blow that was a little late, but didn't look like there was any bad blood between Ardo and Connor for that. Two points against blue. Two points against blue. Ready. Yeah, one of those Sverha landed on the head of blue, subtracting two points. So when when Arto goes up in in right ox, you know it's Sverha is coming your way. Oh. Actually, that was a, a thrust out of the blue uh, by blue uh, that caused Arto to flinch backwards, and it was followed by its Sverha that landed on the side of the head. That was quite nice. That was a beautiful attack, um, and it looked like. Uh, Blue was able to cover after his yeah. initial strike to avoid the uh, the, uh, yeah, the after blow was workout from uh, Ardo. So this is interesting. So uh, Blue is Blue is a lefty. Blue is indeed a lefty. He's also a uh, Fiorist and Vadi fencer. I know he studies both yeah, Fiorist and Vadi. it's interesting to see him take. Uh, for, I forget the name of the guard. Of course, in German, I'd call it Einhorn. But, uh, I believe uh, when he's coming across his body with the point up, I believe that is Finestra on the left, according to Vadi. Two points against red, one point against blue. It looks like Ardo did get a good shot to Last pass. That was a two for blue, uh, one for red. And no pressure, but I can see the score, and it is tied at 2 2. Oh! Oh! oh. Arto, that actually takes the blade out of his hand. That was brilliant. Lovely on set thing. My apologies, I lost the action. <laughs> That'll be two points against Blue. Two points blue. against Blue. That is match. And that is the match. So our third place match goes to Argo Fama. Yeah, but, but you know, it, it, was, it was very, very close. It was very close and, and fact, very technical. Uh, Connor Kemp Cowell came very close to, to being one of the best fencers in human. Yeah. Uh, I think he really, he already is one of the best fencers in HEMA. He has evidenced by the fact that he's here now. But Ardo got it, and he has won a PBT head cover and gorget. All right, so our final bout. For our open long sword, the last match of the yeah, evening. Last match of the evening. Stephen we have Cheney Stephen Cheney Eddie Lewis. in blue and Eddie Lewis in red. Stephen Cheney is with the Medieval European Martial Arts Guild in Bucks County. And Eddie Lewis is with, I believe, Forte, Forte Swordplay up here Boston. in Boston. He's one of Jeff Sy's students. Now, uh, this is this will be an interesting fight. Uh, Eddie Lewis is, uh, he moves beautifully and uh, very athletic, very graceful. Uh, 
but he's got to contend with quite a height difference, which makes makes a big difference, can make a big difference, especially when, uh, depending on how much his opponent thrusts. So and I know... Stephen Cheney. Yeah, look at that. That's some some good sportsmanship bit, that there. Bit, that is a bit of a height difference. Yeah, that's a little mutton Jeff there. Um, and they are both Over fantastic ready. fighters and quick fighters, too. Right. Oh. All right. So. Stephen with it. Up, plays extended. A little bit of blade action. Cut. Parry. Oh, oh, oh. I'm not sure anything happened there. I have no was, idea was, what happened. There was an exchange of, of, of blows and parries, and Eddie Lewis followed with a long and hard thrust and drove his opponent out of the ring. But I don't think it landed. That was a really interesting exchange. Yeah. Very nice. And again. A quick call Fast for the pace, ring out. Good defense from both fighters. Oh! Oh! Yeah, that was a beat and a thrust. I'm not sure what happened. It looked to me like it was a double hit. It looks like both of those thrusts. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what happened. Two, two hits with a thrust. Blue, two points against red. So, two, two points against, against each. Blue, two points against red. This is some fantastic. Oh. Oh. That looked to me like a left Sverhau from Lewis. We'll see what the judges saw. All right, so both of our fighters have a coach in their corner. Their coach is giving them some advice. Right, Toby We're just Hall coaching. Stephen Cheney. Stephen Cheney. And Alex Kotorakis is coaching Eddie Lewis. That would be pausing to give defensive time to acknowledge for Cut to the head from red, nothing right. from blue. Two points against blue. Two points so against blue. So it was indeed that, uh, that Sverhau to the left from Lewis that didn't land. Uh, it looked like a thrust to the hand uh, by blue. But, you know, a thrust to the hand is nothing to sneeze at. No. And there is no guard on these weapons aside from a cross guard. One point against red. And this I think our pass. live stream. This is the last pass. Last okay. pass. This is our last pass here. Uh, our last pass of the last uh, fight right. of the finals at IGX. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. Yep. that was a parry and an Unterhau from Eddie Lewis. The body that should be one point. I didn't see anything land from Blue, did you? I don't think Blue's Blue did land a strike, but I don't think it was in tempo. Final action. Flank cut. One against Blue. One against the Blue. So, Eddie Lewis lands that the right into for the win. And you can see, again, great sportsmanship from both of our fighters. Now that, was, that was nice, clean fighting. <laughs> So our uh, second place is getting a uh, set of sparring gloves and a Combat Con Warrior Pass for next year. And our first place fighter, Eddie Lewis, a forte swordsmanship from Boston. And he is going to be taking home. Jeff size student. He's going to be taking home a Kvetson Fetter. Entry to Long Point next year and a hundred euros for PBT. Thank you very much. If everyone can congregate around the banners over there for a event photo. All right. So there is not going to be an awards ceremony. Those will be awarded later. I think we've given you an idea of what that's going to be. Uh, nice end. Uh, those last few fights were actually quite clean. I'm very happy to see it. You know, it's interesting. This is, um, I, uh, you know, for those of you who know me, I live, I'm American, but I live in Belgium, so I, I, I spent a lot of my time in Europe. And the last time I was at a HEMA tournament in the United States was actually in 2012. So this I'm was... actually very pleased with the level of fencing that I've seen here. I mean, especially, you know, that, that beginners, those beginners fights were The beginners good. are we getting better every year. And, uh, and the final fight, you know, these, uh, for the opens, those are also really good. All right. Well, Matt, I think it's time for us to sign off. Um, we really want to congratulate all of our competitors, but this was the finals live stream from IGX 2018. Again, I'm Patrick McCaffrey from the HEMACast. And we'll see you next year. Thank you.